Hi everyone, so I absolutely apologise for this setup, I really really don't like it as well, but um, we're having a bit of problems with our apartment at the moment and we can't go back to it quite just yet because we've got a bit of a problem with it. And um, So I'm just staying um, at a friend's for now and until I can kind of go back home and we can sort it out. But, um, this video is going to be about products that I have not really been very impressed by. And there's quite a few products like that because I think when you buy so much you're bound to kind of stumble across things that you don't really like. But I'm just going to get it out there and say, even though I know you're all clever and you don't need me to say this to you. But, um, just because I doesn't like a product doesn't mean that it's crap, doesn't mean that it might not work for you. So don't get offended if... I talk about a product that you really, really like, and I say that I don't like it. Don't get offended by that and be all funny with me because there's really no point in that. It wouldn't kind of there'd be no benefit for any of us. And um, yes, yeah, so I'm just going to get started. I'm going to start with makeup because there's quite a few little makeup bits that I really don't like at the moment, and then the rest is all skincare and one hair care. The first product I'm going to talk about is the foundation, and it's the MAC Mineralize Satin Finish Foundation with SPF 15, and I've got it in NC35. And my problem with this foundation is it is a very, very sticky product. So this is what the box, the bottle looks like. Um, I've hardly used any of it, so I don't know why it looks like it's got a hole in it. But um, it's very, very sticky and it kind of sits on your skin. It's It looks pretty when you first apply it because it looks very, very dewy because it's got tiny shimmer particles in it. But once the dewiness has worn off, it starts to look very um, artificial and it just feels horrible on your skin. You, you, it feels sticky. You just feel like you want to wash your face as soon as you've had it on for about an hour. So I really, really don't like this and I really wouldn't buy it again and I actually hardly ever even use it because of this reason. So that was a bit of a waste because it was really expensive but it is just really, really difficult to kind of make it feel natural. The next product is a primer and it's the L'Oreal Studio Secrets Professional Smoothing Resurfacing Primer which looks like this and it's just a kind of very thick cream. It's a pink thick cream and the reason I don't like this is I think this is really the kind of primer that dulls down your complexion so your skin doesn't look real it kind of looks very very flawless but not in a nice way it looks it in a kind of flat way so there's no dimension to your skin no glowiness no it just looks really fake kind of porcelain doll like but not in a nice way so i really really don't like this primer and i wouldn't buy it again and i doubt i'll use it up i use it sometimes for nights out when i've got a lot of blush and a lot of highlighter and that kind of thing on so it does add that natural dimension but without that i really don't like this Next is a tinted moisturiser and it's the number 7 dual protection tinted moisturiser. This is the old packaging, I know they've relaunched it now. But um, the reason I don't like this is it makes your skin <laughs> uber oily. If you've got oily skin, stay clear of this. And the coverage of it isn't amazing either. But um, if you've got dry skin, it might work for you. But if you've got very, very oily skin, then definitely stay clear. The next two things are mascaras, and sadly they're both from the same company, and they're both by Rimmel. So I'm not impressed with your mascaras, Rimmel. The first one is the One Two Three Looks mascara, and this is stupid. It's one of those ones that has like the top part. And then another part and another part, but um, I accidentally pulled the top part off, so it does that. And then it says that if that happens, you just pop it back in, like squeeze it back in, but it doesn't squeeze back in, it just does that. So it's really, really just annoying. And as for the product itself, it's very, very gloopy. It always comes out with too much product on the brush, like can you see that right there? 
too much product on the brush and the bristles are a bit weird and scratchy and it's just very clumpy and it get, does give you volume but your lashes are completely clumped so it's a really horrible horrible product I absolutely hate this and the next one is the Rimmel day to night mascara which again is one of those ones that has the length side and then a volume side and I loved these types of mascaras because I've got very very short lashes and I'd always use a lengthening mascara first and then a volumizing mascara on top of it so I thought great you know it'll save me money it's one product instead of carrying around two but um I've got it on my eyes now I don't know how well you can see but what this does is it really really makes your lashes stick together so you don't have like each and every lash kind of individually coated they're kind of stuck together and it's quite clumpy and the Rimmel really need to sort this out with their brushes you always get too much product on the brush I know you can wipe it off but why is it even doing that it's just gross when you get too much mascara like on the nib of the brush it's just horrible so I really, really wish they could sort that out because the volumising side is quite nice, but it just gets so much product out. You see that little bit right there? Too much product. And it gives you crunchy lashes, which I'm not a fan of, but um, it's about £5 and it's not even worth that. I really wouldn't buy this again. And I think the packaging looks a bit tacky. Um, then I've got a eye product and a lip product and the eye product I think you're all going to hate me for saying this but it is the Urban Decay Primer Potion just got the mini one and the reason I just don't like this is I think the consistency of it is really really just weird I much 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 prefer that's it there and it's just like a cream but then it just feels a bit heavy and greasy on your lids, so I much prefer using something like a MAC Paint Pot because I think it just works so much better. And, I don't know, the packaging, and I'm just not a fan of the Urban Decay Primer Potion, I'm afraid. Next, I've got a lipstick, and it is the infamous Maybelline Amber Rose Lipstick, which looks like this. And I've got it on my lips right now. And the thing I don't like about this is I think it is very overpriced. This is what it looks like. It's just a kind of pretty peachy pink. But it's hardly pigmented and it's about seven or eight pounds. And it's got quite chunky glitter in it. So it's not a particularly high quality lipstick. It's not particularly nourishing or moisturising. It's got really chunky glitter particles in it. And it just kind of looks like not not really much on the on the lips it kind of it looks nice but I just think for the price of it it should be a lot better and a lot nicer and a lot better made so I'm a bit disappointed by that one um moving on to hair products I've got this hair mask by Umberto Giannini and it's the curls friend silky curls intensive mask looks like this and the reason I don't really like this is it's a very very liquid mask so can you see that right there look can you see how liquid it is it's not very kind of heavy and nourishing and that's what curly hair needs it's kind of just like putting conditioner to my hair this is not a treatment it's just conditioner and the way the lid closes is annoying too um, but it's just very very thin and I don't like that and every time you close it the conditioner squeezes out and yeah I wouldn't recommend this at all not to curly hair or maybe if you've got straight hair and you don't want a product to overload it could be good for you but not for curly haired girls I'm afraid next I've got the clean and clear advantage spot control moisturizer which looks like this and this was part of the spot control kit but I've been using it for about a month and a bit now and it's not making any difference to my skin and it kind of feels a bit greasy and heavy so I wouldn't recommend this it's not a horrible product but it's just like an oil free moisturiser but it doesn't really help do anything so I'll probably give this to my sister or something then we've got the Boots Expert Sensitive Gentle Eye Makeup Removal Lotion which looks like this and this is just the worst eye makeup remover ever because it doesn't remove mascara well at all your mascara just still stays on and you have to rub at your eyes quite hard to get your eye makeup off so I really really don't like this I'm using the Garnier one at the moment um, 
but when I finish that I'm going to buy the Nip and Fix oil remover because that looks really nice so I don't like that one. Then um, the La Roche-Posay Ethiclar Lotion Stringent Micro Exfoliant which is their kind of exfoliating toner similar to the Clinique toners. Um, the reason I'm disappointed by this is it is £11 and it does nothing for your pores, nothing for oil control really and it's just your average kind of alcoholy toner but um, for £11 I definitely definitely would not buy it again. You do get a fair amount, you get 200 mils, but I wouldn't buy this again because it just doesn't really do much to your skin. Then I've got a product by Soap and Glory and it's the Soap and Glory Fab Pore Facial Mask and it is one of their kind of so-called peeling masks but it's basically a mask that just doesn't do anything, it kind of sits on your skin and you wash it off and your skin doesn't look any different so I just really really don't like this. The only thing I think that's nice about this is it's got a really nice smell and then the last thing is something that I am absolutely gutted that I'm disappointed by because it was expensive and I wanted it badly. And it's the Origins Brighter by Nature Exfoliating Pads, which are basically like a um, lactic acid, but here it's using fruit acid facial peel. So like a peel that you'd have in a salon, but you can do it at home with alpha hydroxy acid. And they look like this and they're just little pads. But for the life of me, they do nothing to your skin. Your skin looks a little bit red, but that's it. The bumpiness, the dryness doesn't go away. Your skin doesn't look exfoliated. It doesn't look as nice as if you'd use a grainier exfoliator. And I really, really wanted to love these. And I really, really don't. I'm really disappointed by them. And they're £30, which is extortionate. And it's just heartbreaking that they're so naff, really. So I really don't like those. If anyone has got any other recommendations for kind of similar products as in non-grainy, like um, acid types of exfoliators that are not too expensive, then pop them in the description box below. I think maybe number 721, I can't remember. But um, pop it in the comments below and I'll try and check that one out because I was really disappointed by that and I don't like being disappointed by an expensive product. It's even more annoying than if it was a cheap one. So yeah, those are my disappointing products. Let me know what your most disappointing products are in the comments below and I will see you all soon. Bye guys.